Welcome back, party people. It's the BMR NBA Odds Show brought to you by Bookmakers Review. I am Jordan Sharp, and uh, back from a little hiatus, joined as always by my guy, Junior Brown. It's a uh, little short Tuesday slate. We had a wild one yesterday in the association on a big Monday. Not going to touch on everything because, frankly, we just don't have time uh, to touch on everything that happened yesterday. But a few points. Wasn't on the show. Did have an official pick, though, up on BMR. Just could not get it done was red hot heading into the end of 2021 and 2022 is hit and I have uh, hit, a, hit a little bit of a wall. I'm going to try to bounce back from that today, uh, but you couldn't get uh, the Blazers team total under yesterday. I refuse to take the Atlanta Hawks seriously ever again. I thought maybe with the Blazers three best players out that perhaps they would at least play average defense, but no, what do they do? They give up 70 in the first half, uh, 136 to a, a team that was essentially comprised of Amperty Simons, um, ben McLabor and your guy, Norm Powell. And they dropped 136 points on the Hawks yesterday. Just absolutely blew open my un- my team total under, the full game under. That was a, that was a personal play for me. Uh, I was on the right side of that. Steamed down three points. Got a lot of closing line value. Just didn't matter. A- Atlanta's an absolute joke. You know who's not a joke? Uh, hold on. Is this thing on? Uh, John Moran is very good at basketball, Junior Brown. Uh, that's all the only thing I have to say. That kid continues to uh, assert himself as uh, one of the, the on the Mount Rushmore of uh, point guards right now. Uh, people keep talking about this guy Luka Doncic. I, I, don't, I don't even know who that is to be honest. I, who, who is that? I haven't seen him in a while. Uh, uh, John Morant's the real deal, folks. Outside of Steph Curry, man, he may be the uh, the next best dynasty point guard in the entire NBA. And I know that I know that's saying a lot, uh, JB, but. Uh, I, I, I can't keep hyping up on the show. I'm going to have to hang his jersey back up behind me here because things just keep getting crazier with him. Uh, they dominated Brooklyn yesterday. Uh, Brooklyn did make a little bit of a comeback in that game with the scrubs in, which was fun to watch, by the way, if you were watching that one last night. Uh, Brooklyn took all their starters out, and then the the young guys uh, just absolutely tor- started torching these Grizzlies, and they had to put John Morant back in the game to close this one out. But uh, anyways, long-winded way to say 0 for 1 yesterday. I'm going to try to bounce back today. Uh, Junior, how did you, uh, you do yesterday on Monday? Um, two and them. Uh, I had your boy John Morant and Memphis plus seven. I, I said on the show I would take him at plus six and a half or six. I did say under six it would be uh, Brooklyn. Uh, that being said, I also did say that Brooklyn just doesn't look good right now. Uh, I've watched their last couple of games like very, very closely. And they, they get into this thing where... Uh, they just basically run very simplistic high pick and roll and expect Durant and Harden to go one-on-one all the time. What was weird about the Clippers game the other day, like I mentioned on the show yesterday, was when they finally start running, started running their offense, they got Durant good looks, but then they just started turning the ball over just by being kind of lackadaisical and careless. Um, yesterday, they just simply couldn't produce enough points. 104 points is not enough to get the job done, I'm sorry to say. Uh, again, very top-heavy. And when James Harden only comes through with 19 points, um, that, that's what's going to happen. You're only going to get 104. Even Kevin Durant had a, a pretty average game with 26. Yeah, he was off. Yeah, he was really off. Yeah, yeah. So Desmond Bain went off yesterday, got tw- got him 29. Like when Desmond Bain outscores uh, Kevin Durant, uh, that's going to be always going to be a problem for the Nets. But again, I think the market was really disrespectful to the Grizzlies, which, which is why I took that line. When I saw it at seven, I was like, this is insanity. Uh, I, I max bet that shit because it's just that 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 line just kind of seemed uh, too good to be true. I don't want to say it got a little bit luckier in the Miami game because the truth of the matter is Miami got the job done without Jimmy Butler uh, at the end of the game who got hurt. Yeah. Um, ten and a half points in an NBA game uh, between two playoff teams is mad disrespectful. I'm sorry to say I know that Miami's missing guys, but Miami's not some average team. Uh, who doesn't have, you know, continuity and, and, and a, you know, a reputation for a strong work ethic. These, this is a team that, you know, in 98% of games throughout the course of a season, sorry, they come to play and they play hard. Um, and, and that's what you saw uh, yesterday. Obviously, it helped that Steph Curry played one of the worst games you'll see him yeah. play. But again, Jordan Poole went off. Jordan Poole scored like 32 points in like 25 minutes or something. So... It, it, it all kind of balanced out. Um, good, good way uh, to start off the week. Obviously, going two and zero. Just looking to keep that going, uh, like I did last week, and, and help everybody watching this show that that wants to tail cast some tickets. So, whenever you're ready, Jordan, let's get into uh, today's game. Yeah, real today's quick. Games. 
Yeah, Steph got that uh, those quick two fouls yesterday. That kind of doomed him off to a rough start. But, my, man, my most approved player bets are just uh, – that was the one solace I took with yesterday is Jordan Poole and Desmond Bain going off. Anyways, we got to get to today's slate. Got five of them for you. It's a tough slate. A few spots that I like, haven't jumped on just yet, but we're going to open it up here with the Spurs heading into Toronto to play the Raptors. Raptors relatively healthy, uh, healthier than they've been in a very long time. And now they're at home. Uh, limited. I'm not. I, well, I, well, I'll kick it to Junior here for just a second, but not sure if they're at limited or no no fan capacity tonight. Uh, we'll play a factor in this one here, but they are slight favorites here. Two possessions, about six points, seven points. Now it looks like it's gone up to totals. The one where I've kind of played around here with this one. It keeps just going up and down, up and down. It was up to two twenty five and a half. Now back down to two twenty four and a half. I keep thinking the under has some value here, but that would uh, mean that I have to trust. San Antonio without their best player here and, and to play some defense. Granted, I think their offense is going to be fine. Derek White has kind of proven that he can be, you know, that facilitator if need be, and he's proven that in times past, even without DeJounte Murray here. But they're also without Lonnie Walker, which hurts. They're also without Doug McDermott. I mean, two wing players it's, uh, that are uh, that are rotation guys for this team. So kind of came in leaning to uh, San Antonio. But the more I think about it, the more Toronto may be the play here. But the the, the lack of a home court advantage here kind of is leading me to kind of stay away from his, this one, Junior. So, do you have any plays on this one? Uh, what do you think about the spread in total of this one? Uh, it's it's kind of rough. Um, as usual, I'm going to say that I always have a hard time capping San Antonio. So, I'm always kind of leery. Uh, minus seven for Toronto seems like a lot. Yeah. Um, it would have to be San Antonio, to be honest, which is just, an, a, just I can't take San Antonio on the road. I'm just, I'm just not doing that. Um, as for Toronto, they're slowly uh, but surely getting much better. They're already, they've creeped up uh, to be basically a borderline top 10 offense. And if you were really paying attention to the way the season started, sorry, I'm just looking off to see uh, who's in for the Spurs here. Uh, but if, if you've really been paying attention to the season, the Raptors' offense to start the year was god awful. It looked really, really bad. Now I know they were pretty shorthanded, uh, and they've gotten some bodies back. But seven points would seem like enough to take for the Spurs. Like this is a very, very sharp line because you're really not going to be willing to lay more than seven with the Raptors. Even seven, like I said, is just too much. But but the Spurs have lost three in a row, uh, and which I don't really hold against them too much because they lost to the Spurs and they lost to the Grizzlies, which are two good teams. But then losing to, to Detroit in overtime, uh, second half of a back-to-back, -back, so, you know, you might possibly, you know, give them a little bit of leeway in that situation. But when I look at those games, it kind of just makes me realize I just don't really know what this team is because right before this three-game winning streak, our losing streak, they were on a three-game winning streak, and they looked pretty good doing it. They were putting up huge numbers, 144 against uh, the Pistons when they when they played them at home, uh, 138 against the Lakers, 116, 114, 120. Like, that's what all these are all consecutive. And then the last couple of games, 104, 105, they got 116 in an overtime loss, but I don't, I don't understand. I don't know this team. I don't understand this team. I don't know how to properly cap them so i have nothing on this game yeah this one's tough it's uh raptors and spurs both are top half uh top half of the league in offense offensive efficiency this year i mean that they at times you're right both of them can look quite you know adept on offense the spurs obviously take a, a hit without without murray but you think of what the Raptors have gone through with injury and health and safety protocols this year and how they've clawed their way to a top half offensive team uh, so far this season. I mean, that's that's pretty impressive to me. I I will say this, though. If there's one thing I'm kind of looking for in this game is some of the prop value, which I don't know necessarily where it could come from. But, I mean, without Murray, like you got to think a guy like Van Vliet already had a pretty good matchup without without Murray who's a, one you know one of their better if not best on ball defenders like that it's going to be tough to slow down him tonight at home a couple other guys I, I'm also interested to kind of see um uh if if they're if this uh Raptors going small affects uh Yaka Pertle at all and, and what kind of a, a, a prop play he'll be here tonight but yeah so it's tough uh tough spread and tough total for this game right now can't really derive a ton of value from either side of it and and yeah it's just I'm, I think I'm in agreement with you 
once again, we're not in the guessing game. We're we're in the uh, we're making we're making educated guesses, but not we're not we're not into guessing. We we don't we don't like gambling. We like uh, we like positive EV plays here. So this is kind of a gamble to me. So I think it's going to be a stay away. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Uh, speaking of John Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies, uh, they're heading into Cleveland tonight. Cavaliers still a little banged up. We got Garland back, obviously, but now without Isaac Okoro, that that hurts a little bit. We know Ricky Rubio's down for the season as well as Colin Sexton. So. Uh, for me, I think this game would probably be the Grizzlies or nothing, but coming off of a back-to-back, a real a real big win last night, but a game, like I said, it mentioned in the open, like they were cruising. They were up 20-plus points, basically, the entirety of that second half until, you know, Brooklyn just w- assumingly waved the white flag, and those young guys came in and forced, uh, um, forced Taylor Jenkins' hand and forced him to put John Morant back in the game. So, for me, that's that's tough, uh, you know, with him and Desmond Bain, like you mentioned, having to, having to play Superman last night. If they can't duplicate those efforts, it's like a very tough defensive team in Cleveland here. Going to be hard for me to take the points here with Memphis, even though I do think I lean that way. But I don't know if that's necessarily a biased play or not. So, uh, total wise things, I know that you have a play on this game here. So I'm going to kick it to you over for that because that's another play that I was I was kind of leaning towards, but haven't quite gotten there. For the main reason is because Grizzlies defense looked good last night in the game they got up for. Now they're going to Cleveland. Can, can I expect the same defensive effort from this Memphis Grizzlies team on the on a on tired, no rest day, on the road against a team that they probably should beat um, overall? But without with the you know, situations involved and being tired, JB, what do you think we see from the Memphis defense tonight? So it's funny. Um, Memphis actually plays much much worse the more uh, defensively anyway. The more rest you give them uh, on on three days of rest or more. They, have, they, they allow 121 points a game. Uh, on no rest and on one day's rest, they allow 107 points a game. So, so the splits are wild. And it's the same thing with their offense. Um, th- their offensive splits are huge uh, with, with the more rest they get. So uh, I'm not really sure what to make of that, but I do have an official play, which is the under. Uh, I think that uh, the fact that uh, on the road, they average five less points per game uh, is going to play a factor. The fact that they played last night, um, like I said, they're, on, on no day's rest, their numbers are kind of uh, kind of the same. Uh, but it, but in this situation, I just think that against a superior defensive team uh, like the Cavs, uh, John Moran is not going to be able to go to the basket at will against this Cavs team. Like if you really watch the Cavs, it it's not just Jared Allen. It's not just Mobley. Even what's his name? Even Lori Markkinen is out there sw- uh, protecting the rim. Like they have three legitimate rim protectors in their starting lineup, uh, and, and they have um, they just have this a, a chemistry that just seems very organic. Like the, no one guy is trying to be the guy. They're just doing whatever it takes um, to get results, and and their coach has to be a candidate for coach of the year. I mean, they're 21 and 16. J.B. Bickerstaff, you know, he's had a couple of, like, small opportunities. I'm pretty sure he was in Memphis before. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's been interim a couple times at yeah, year, I think. Exactly. And now that he's getting a chance, he's really getting the job done. I mean, even the fact that they're 12th off- in offensive rating, if you look at the players on their roster, is kind of a minor miracle. Again, Darius Garland is not even available right now. So you don't have Colin Sexton. You don't have Darius Garland. Shout out to Rick, uh, to Kevin Love, who's kind of been balling in the last like two weeks because he was on fire uh, heading into Christmas and New Year's. Um, so yeah, uh, it's it's all working for the Cavs, and it works because they play defense. I think that in a situation like this, where you know um, Brooklyn might have some tired legs, New York City. Uh, I'm not going to say they went out last night because it was a back to back, so they probably didn't have an opportunity to go out, but. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, The one thing I like about the Cavaliers is that their splits, unlike most of the teams in the NBA, their home versus road splits in terms of their offensive defense, it's not really that much different. They average one less point per game on the road and one and a half points per game and, and allow one and a half points per game more on the road. Now, obviously, this is a home game for them, which is why I love the under. They only allow 101 and a half points per game to their opponents at home, which is a crazy good number. Uh, give me the under here. 
I'm not going to say they can lock up John Moran because I don't think they have anyone on the roster right now that can one-on-one uh, stop him. Like uh, Pangos versus John Moran it seems like one of the biggest mismatches uh, you could possibly speak on. But uh, Cleveland is more than that. I don't. I don't think one guy is going to be enough to do it. Not to say that you know Memphis only relies on John Moran. But I think Cleveland is it, the way they approach the game these days, the way that they, they their style of play, super professional, always work hard, a uh, bunch of long bodies, and, and yeah, I don't know. Um, I feel like I, I, I'm almost selling a Cleveland play. I'm yeah. not. I'm selling a Cleveland defensive performance, which, by the way, happens literally every single game. And it's not like Memphis are slouches on defense themselves. So I think that Memphis will also uh, bring a pretty solid defensive effort. Uh, and we will get. I, I hate the fact that it was steamed down because I think it opened at like 218. I got it under 216 in this spot. Yeah, I think that's. I, if there's one play I think I'm going to tell you on, it's that one. Uh, it was one that I was considering here before. Just that Memphis back to back kind of scares me a little bit. But you're right. Cleveland, um, I mean, I think they're fifth in offensive rating at home in their last five home games. You got Cleveland, they're like seventh. Or sorry, Memphis, they're seventh, I think, in their last uh, five or six road games. And defensive efficiency like yeah these are two teams that if they play up to their potential on that end of the court yeah it's easy easy money on the under here just a little bit of the you know, Okoro being out for Cleveland kind of sucks because he's another one of those guys that's just extremely good defender um you're right about the the, uh, the 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 Cleveland wall that they have built in their starting lineup three four five with Markin and Mobley and Allen that's going to definitely play tonight I think they they neutralize Steven Adams a lot uh wouldn't surprise me though to see the Grizz go small and try to stretch them out a little bit too which would um cause some problems for the under as well. But I agree with you. I think that would be, it's definitely where the sharp money's been, been put on this game, to say the least. Um, let's get on Let's get on to a team that I, I swore I would never talk about uh, again on the show, but here we are, the Indiana Pacers heading into Madison Square Garden to play the Knicks. Uh, this is another one where you've seen a lot of steam hit the total from 209.5 to 207. A little bit of course correction, though, here lately uh, because Julius Randle has now been upgraded to questionable, which has also led to the Knicks getting some steam here uh, from one and a half to two and a half points. Before the Randle news, I was at least considering taking the points with the Pacers here. Now, I know they're extremely banged up right now due to COVID protocols, missing a ton of guards. They're playing Dwayne Washington Jr. a ton of minutes. Like, this is a team that... Uh, is very light on ball handlers right now, and that is a big problem uh, against this Knicks team. And so it's probably now with Randall coming back is going to lead me to lay off that entirely, if not maybe switch my lean over to the other side. But this is another one where I lean under uh, pretty heavily because of the aforementioned guard problems for Indiana. JB, you coach basketball. If you know one thing, if you don't have your main ball handlers, even against a, a Knicks team that's a poor defensive team, it's going to lead to more turnovers. It's going to lead to sloppier offense. Your sets just aren't going to feel the same. They're not going to have the crisp, the crispness and the execution that you'd have if you normally have your main ball handlers out there. And without those guys for Indiana, you've kind of seen that here in their couple last couple games. And I think you see that here, which should be a pretty good crowd in Madison Square Garden here tonight, too. So for me, the under is probably the play that I would jump on if I had anything on this game, because right now with the Randall news and the Indiana injury report situation, you know, considered, they're probably a stay away, if not a complete fade here on the spread side of things. It's just a, a matter of you're facing a team that you match up, you know, matches up pretty well with you in size and you're down all your ball handlers. You're basically your main two advantages would be advantages are going out the window right now. So anything on this one, J.B.? You kind of just touched a nerve and my mind kind of went off somewhere because uh, you just reminded me of the last game that I coached. Uh, we lost in the playoffs uh, to a team that we beat pretty handily in the regular season twice. And the reason that happened is because my starting point guard is not really a point guard or was not really a point guard. He's, he's kind of like a shoot first guard. Uh, so my backup point guard, would, who was a sixth man, would come in a lot and I would just move him to two just to kind of get him under control. My backup point guard doesn't show up to that game because he was out of town with his family. My starting point guard was kind of losing his mind, just having a meltdown. So I had to sit him. And with no other ball handlers, we lost to a team that we had absolutely no business losing to. So when I tell you that I know this pain yep. firsthand, bro, uh, it, it, first of all, if you're actually watching Indiana basketball, which I know you do, there's legitimately uh, at least one third of the game where they are playing with no point guard whatsoever on the court. I mean, yeah, when Karis LeVert was healthy, they were starting him at point guard. For, well, exactly. Now they're without both those guys. 
I watched the Cleveland game the other day. There was a point where where the game kind of slipped away for Indiana, for Indiana a little bit. They had no point guard on the court. They, they just didn't. They were able to kind of hang around. But uh, if they had a point guard in that game, and if they had a point guard in their last couple of games, they'd probably win those games because they played well against the Bulls too. It's not like they played a shitty game. Uh, there was, there's no point that the Bulls pulled away from them. It was, it was, a, it was kind of like a slugfest until the end. Excuse me, until the end. And it was kind of the same thing against Cleveland. The Cleveland didn't really pull away from them at any point. It was kind of a slugfest until the end. And those types of games are definitely decided by, by your point guard or by your principal ball handlers. So uh, until I said this, and listen, you know this for a fact, Jordan. When TJ McConnell got injured, I yeah. said, listen, a lot of y'all probably don't think it's a big deal that this guy got hurt, but he's like the only real point guard on the entire roster. Not to say that Malcolm Brogdon can't play that role, but that's not who he is. When he sits, again, you go back to the no point guard thing. Uh, and, and against this Knicks team, it's going to be a problem. Um, I don't have a look on this game, but as long as Indiana has no principal ball handler, I can't ever invest in these guys. It's either I'm fading them or I'm staying away. Uh, I don't have a look on the total. I'm interested to hear what you have to say. Uh, 207 seems pretty damn low, man. Um, Especially in a, uh, for a game and play in Madison Square Garden, I don't know. Um, I, I'm off this game just because I, I don't. I just don't see an advantage. So yeah. that's the reason why I have no play. I will say this, and we have trashed the Knicks on this show a lot. I mean, as a Bulls fan, it basically comes naturally to me. I was essentially born into uh, just trashing the Knicks, and that's fine. You know, I mean, they, they they probably feel the same way about the Bulls. You know, that 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 rivalry goes back a very very long way. Uh, but the Knicks have been better on defense lately, and it's evident. And now with Randall coming back, that can only help them because, I mean, we talked about this before. Like, you get one of your main bucket getters on the offensive end just getting you easier baskets where you don't have to expend a whole lot of energy on offense. Uh, makes your defense play a lot better because you get to reserve more energy, and they are sixth in the league in defensive efficiency over their last 10 games. And that's going to play tonight against an Indiana team that, you, like we've mentioned, is going is to have some problems running their sets, to say the least, and has been having some problems running their sets for the last six or seven games, at least. So, yeah, I mean, for me, maybe, and this is the other thing, like, I don't know if I can trust Indiana's defense either, so maybe an Indiana team total on the under here, but, yeah, I, I would probably lean towards the under, man. I, I'm I'm of a pretty firm believer that if the Knicks can play any sort of, like, above-average defense tonight, the Pacers are going to have a really hard time scoring. Because on, on top of that, their size should at least counter the Knicks at the rim a little bit and force at the Knicks, as long, as long as the Knicks aren't hitting, you know, 15 threes tonight, that, that could play as well that, but you're right. It is, it, that's the, the margin of error is so low on this total because it's at 207 that all it's going to take is a 30 point quarter from one of these teams, probably the Knicks. Uh, and, and it's, it might go bust because it, there's just not a lot of room for error when, when the total is 20 something. So yeah, that I, uh, for me, you're, you're relying on the Pacers to score points without, uh guards essentially or without like nba credible starting guards and you're asking the knicks to do it against a team that matches up pretty well against them too so yeah it's t- it's tough man i'm 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 kind of split on this total a little bit it's one of the reasons why i'm staying off i i uh, i see this is going to three now too there's there's money coming in on the knicks i think for these exact reasons we just talked about uh we got two more games we got to get through here in the next five minutes so let's speed through these real fast we'll go to nolens tonight uh with the suns heading into town Phoenix, a seven and a half point favorite. This did touch eight points. It is now back down to seven and a half. The Pellies coming off of a back to back last night. Um, so I haven't quite gotten an injury report for them, but with, we, we know with the Suns, their big man situation. Uh, I don't have a play on this game, but this is another one where I think I'll, I, I want to lay off the Suns just strictly because I, I think the prop value on the Pelican side could have some play tonight. But the, the issue is we're, we're heading into a back to back. And if the Suns play good and the, and the Pellies fold early, um, that that could be a problem for any any over bets you place with the Pelicans here tonight. Not not including that they're tired, but rebounding the ball has been especially hard for the Phoenix Suns without their two big two best big men in Javale McGee and DeAndre Ayton, both still out tonight. No disrespect to Jalen Smith, but he is uh, outmatched tonight against Jonas Valanciunas. Even a tired Jonas Valanciunas is going to muscle this kid around tonight and grab a bunch of rebounds, and that's only going to. Um, be for, even if Valanciunas doesn't uh, get to play a whole lot, if the Suns go small. 
There's other Pelicans tonight that I think could have some rebounding prop value. Josh Hart, Brandon Ingram. I don't know who it's going to be yet. I'm trying to figure that out. I got to see an injury report first because that's one of the first steps in prop betting. You got to know who's playing uh, to be able to allocate stats correctly. But for me, yeah, I think if the, the one thing that's kind of scaring me away from that and it scares me away from any overs is that if the Suns just uh, come out, I mean, Suns have, been play, have not been playing well lately. I think they've lost three of their last five or, or, or two of their last five. I can't remember what it is. It's not exactly been world beaters lately. So I, the Pelicans have been playing better. We've touched on that as well. Um, that being said, I think the only way I could see this game from a spread perspective would be the Suns. But if that doesn't happen, the Pelicans rebounding the ball could have some value tonight, even tired. But like I said, I got to know who's playing tonight. So real quick, anything on uh, Suns and Pellies tonight? I love that you brought up Jalen Smith because I just so happened to be watching uh, that that Charlotte Phoenix game the other day uh, when my guy Jalen Smith baptized Mason Plum- Plumley. I don't know if you saw that dunk. He, he dunked on Mason Plumley so hard, even the Hornets announcers were like, damn, Jalen Smith. The Hornets announcers always get hyped, which is one of the best parts about watching Hornets games, but yeah. Uh, well, it's funny. Well, one of them does, because Del Curry doesn't really yeah, get Del hyped. Curry, I don't know what their play-by-play guy's name, but yeah, whatever his name is. He, he has some great calls, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, need, I need to go watch a YouTube uh, clip of his calls. Anyway, sorry. I Sorry to digress. No, no, no. He's hilarious, especially when Lamelo Ball does anything. Yeah. He sounds like he's and about Miles to. Bridges. Yeah, Miles Bridges. He gets way too excited. Yeah. yeah, It's funny. But the point I'm trying to make is... You know who had the second most points for Phoenix in that game? Jalen Smith. You know who had the second most shot attempts for Phoenix in that game? A guy named Jalen Smith. Now I'm not trying to say Jalen Smith. Play. I'm not. Yeah, kick and play. Yeah. Right don't, guys, don't don't get it twisted. What I'm trying to say is he was a 10th overall pick, and he had some injury issues last year. Had some issues this year. Uh, wasn't really getting that much playing time. You have to say he's going to be part of the rotation if he can keep this up until uh, DeAndre Ayton comes back. Now, of course, he is no match for Jonas Valanciunas, but the Pelicans on a back-to-back are absolutely no match for the Suns. Because Horrible again, spot, yeah. Exactly. Because I watched that game against Charlotte, the Suns had that game done and dusted by halftime. That game was over. Um, nobody for Phoenix played 30 minutes. Uh, everybody played somewhere in the mid to low 20s or less. So they're going to be well rested. They have the rest advantage anyway. Uh, the Pelicanos on back to back, sorry guys, I don't have that those stats up. So I can't really um, comment on them. But I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie to y'all. I didn't even really need to look. I'm going to bet the Suns. The only reason I haven't is because, like I just said, my research is not done. It's still early. It's talking to Jordan. It's got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, so I haven't had a chance to sit down and, and crunch these numbers. But, um, yeah, the, I, the Pelicanos, this is a bad, bad spot for the Pelicans, who are actually not that bad on no rest, except for the fact that their offense kind of tanks. Um, yeah, last two especially, yeah. Yeah, they average 102 points per game on back-to-back situations. It's not great. Um, so I, I would be a bit concerned about that. Um, I don't love the points, but at the exact same time, because of the rest advantage, this line actually might be a bit short. Uh, I'm, I'm taking, I'm taking uh, that line, odds makers are, are um, put the line out as is because Phoenix has not even been winning out right, let alone covered spreads. So, you know, people obviously want action um, to, to the action to even out. I still don't see a world where people are, are, are taking the points with the Pelicanos unless it's like 10. Like, you got to give me 10 or more for me to even consider looking at the Pelicans. Uh, the Suns have been off since Sunday. I mean, not off since Sunday. They had a day rest. Pelicans played last night. Uh, I'm most likely going to have the Suns on, my, on a ticket before the end of this day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I just pulled up their uh, no-rest stats. Their last game against the Jazz, they gave up 128 points per 100 possessions. Their last two before that, 112. The one before that, 117 to the Kings, and then 126 per 100 possessions to the Knicks. Uh, that's not good. Yeah, you're you're right. The it, Suns, Suns are, are screaming my name. I don't know if I'm going to get there, but definitely lean there. Uh, real quick, we got to wrap it up with Kings and the Lakers tonight. I don't have anything on this game, uh, neither of which teams I can very, I can trust as far as I can throw them. Uh, I, I will say this, another game that props could have some value, live betting could have some value. 
Russell Westbrook, as, as much maligned as he has been on the show, uh, to both of us at least over time, he has he has a very good matchup tonight, like to say the least. Like the, the guy could go off and have a triple double very easily tonight. Maybe something I could be looking at as well. But anything real quick on the Kings and Lakers, absolutely nothing for me on this game. Oh no. I mean, no, just no. Maybe possibly I could get uh involved in an underplay here, but I, I that that's just a reach. Uh, gun to my head under 230. I see 231s out there. It seems like a lot. Uh, the Lakers offense isn't great. Um, they're actually ranked 24th in the league in offensive efficiency. For those of you that think I'm just being a hater, that's not good. And the Kings are ranked 21st in offensive efficiency. So I'm not really sure why this total is so insanely high. Uh, so maybe a look on the under, but no official on this game at all. This total has been bouncing around very weirdly. 232 it opened. It went down to like 228 and a half. Now it's back up to 230, 231. Very, very strange. Like, I think it's just a, a, a testament to like, I, I don't know what's going on. You don't know what's going on. I mean, no, no you're, you're kind of just kind of throwing money at this game, to be honest, to either side of it. But yeah, it's just tough, uh, tough game to handicap, tough game to uh, trust either team uh, right now. Definitely, definitely hard to trust the Kings to play defense uh, for sure. Uh, man. Yeah, that if the if the Lakers cover here, the over is absolutely skying over because they're they're gonna drop a buck thirty on this team. Uh, we, we're out we're out of time. We are way we are way way over. We gotta get out of here. Uh, real quick though, before we wrap it up, let's go to our officials. I will start because there's nothing official uh, for me today. I will say that oh I I, I with Junior kind of lean lean the Suns. Uh, definitely lean towards that under in Memphis, Cleveland. I might might end up tailing you on that one, JB. But uh, go ahead with your officials real quick. Yeah, just one. Uh, the under in the Cavs, Grizzlies under 216, and heavy lean to the Suns, minus seven. All right, let's get it done tonight. You heard it first. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us here at Bookmakers Review NBA Show. Make sure you check out all the content we have at Bookmakers Review, as well as our YouTube channel. Like, share, and subscribe to every last bit of content we got out there. A ton of great shows, ton of great written content ton of great pre-produced videos, anything you want to uh, make you a better handicapper. We got it here at Bookmakers Review. For my guy, JB, I'm Jordan Sharp. Same time tomorrow, same place. But until then, best of luck to you on all your Tuesday NBA picks. Oh, oh.